Hey you guys, welcome and welcome back to Mom Jeans by Nutcase. It's yours truly, the Nutcase Casey Nicole, as always, here to drop some truth, some honesty, some authenticity, okay? Looking back, I just wanted to give a little prefix to this video because there's been a large chunk of time that has passed since I recorded this video. And if you guys have not seen my most recent video about having regrets, for having my kids, then I would suggest you also check that one out as well. In addition, I have more videos linked within that video that can give you more context as to my point of view, but there has been a substantial amount of time that has passed since the original filming of this video. However, I believe wholeheartedly in the beauty of progress and evolution. So I decided to edit it anyway and to drop it for you guys just so that you can get whatever gems are held within it. I definitely feel like there's some valuable information within this video, especially to all of my beautiful mothers out there and for anyone else who may want a little bit of insight into that which is motherhood. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you soon. All right, you guys, we are back again here at Mom Jeans by Nutcase. Thank y'all so much for being here. Welcome or welcome back, whichever you may be. I really appreciate you guys. Y'all be sure to like the video, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to turn post notifications on so you can be caught up every time I post. And today, you guys, I'm going to be talking to y'all about some of the things that I've learned being a mother and what I've realized that I had to stop doing in order to keep my sanity, okay? This is like crazy to me to be talking about this because it's really hard hard if you're already a mother to come to terms with the things that you may need to change about your existence in order to keep your sanity or in order to survive. But these are things that I feel like are really important. And today we are going to be talking about the three biggest mistakes that I see mothers making when it comes to living their life and keeping their sanity because it's extremely hard to be a mother. And a lot of people are deciding not to become mothers, which applause. More power to you, honey. Thank you so much for making that decision. And for those of you who are already mothers who may be regretting your kids, don't feel bad because literally sometimes I regret having my children. Part of the reason why I have those regrets is because of what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm not gonna say parent because it's not the same for fathers. The same stigmas are not put on fathers as they are put on mothers. The same expectations are not given to fathers as they are given to mothers. Mothers are supposed to be this very ethereal, like angelic, type of person or source of life in this world and I feel like people have so much pressure that they put on mothers within our society as if we're supposed to be perfect as if we're never supposed to make mistakes but literally there's life and with life comes lessons and the reason why you learn those lessons and the way by which you learn lessons is through making mistakes so you have to learn and I feel like I've learned a lot about motherhood in the short time that I've been a mother I don't even have any teens yet I'm about to have my first teen this year and it does not get any easier as you go along so I wanted to talk to you guys about what I learned from my experience as a mother raising children and helping them to grow up because society wants you to be one way but in reality you can't be that way like it's unrealistic the expectations that are put on you that you feel like you have to uphold they're really unrealistic they there's no possible way that you could do this like there's no possible way that any human can do all of these things and not find some type of exhaustion or some type of change that needs to happen. So let's just go ahead and get into it, you guys.
The third mistake that I feel like a lot of women make when it comes to motherhood is believing that they're not gonna make mistakes. You may think that you can do things differently than your mother or your grandmother or other women within your family that you've looked at raised children, but in reality, you're always gonna make mistakes. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what walk of life you experience and live in, as a mom, you're going to make mistakes because every experience is different. Every mother is different and every child is different. So there's gonna be things that you experience within raising your children that's going to be different than what other people experience and therefore you're going to have to learn a different lesson. A lot of times people think that they can prepare to be a mother. People think that they can read the books or compare the experiences that other people have had to the experience that they're going to have and you find as you get into it that your experience is nothing like anyone else's and you are going to make mistakes. You're going to have to learn what works for you. You're going to have to navigate through what works for you and your kids. I feel like as mothers we need to embrace more of the learning process. We need to embrace the learning curve. We need to welcome it with open arms because if you aren't able to gain the experience through fumbling the ball at certain points in times as a mother, then you won't be able to minister to those other women who may come after you within your family or outside of your family. So what I want you guys to understand is that mistakes are going to be made. There's going to be things that you feel like you wish you would have done better. But one thing about it, looking back on the past is fine if you want to reflect, but I am a firm believer that you can't dwell in the past. You can't try to reconcile the past because the past is the past. It's already past. It's done. It's gone. That time frame is over with. So you can't try to change what you feel like you might have done better. You can't change anything. You can't change what you did. You can't change how you handled situations. You cannot go back into the past to make anything different from what it already is. You have to just continue to absorb those experiences and absorb those lessons and move forward. But one of the biggest things that I feel is that a lot of women go into motherhood, especially during the time of their pregnancy or shortly after they have their child, affirming to themselves that they're going to do better than someone else around them because they've seen and witnessed the different mistakes other people have made. And it's like they put this level of perfection on themselves that's really unattainable. And I feel like that's unhealthy. I feel like as mothers, we have to understand understand that we don't have all the answers. No one has all the answers to anything in life. So we can't be perfect. We're not going to be able to be perfect. All we can do is the best we can with what we have. And that's one mistake that I think a lot of women make is thinking that they aren't going to make mistakes. Embrace it. Now, the second, this is funny. <laughs> now, the second thing that I feel is extremely important for you to consider as a mother, and one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of mothers making is listening to other people's advice. Now, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying that you should not listen to other people's advice when it comes to parenting or motherhood, but this kind of touches on what we talked about when it comes to making mistakes. When I said that everyone's experience is going to be different, your experience as a mother is gonna be different from your sister's experience as a mother or your mother's experience or your grandmother or your aunt or your cousins. Everyone has different experiences because we all have different spirits and souls and we have different life purposes and paths that we're supposed to go down. When you listen to someone else's advice about how you should raise your kids, that will bring a lot of regrets for you in the future. This is one thing that I regret the most about being a mother. I was a very young mother. I had my kids when I was very young. My first son was born when I was 18. I had just turned 18. My second son was born at 19 and there were a a lot of people that were trying to tell me how I should handle my child, how I should raise my kids. A lot of times it didn't align with what I wanted for my children or what I wanted for my family, what I wanted as a mother. It wasn't necessarily that they were trying to be malicious. It's just a lot of times people adapt to situations and they learn how to maneuver those situations the best way that they can. So a lot of the recommendations that you could be hearing from people who you know, family members, relatives, loved ones, friends, people online, wherever you hear these recommendations, you have to understand that they're coming from a place where this person has tried their best to make the best out of a difficult situation. So the way that they've chosen to resolve the situation personally within themselves may not fit the way that you would like to resolve the situation within yourself. For example, my first son, my oldest son was very difficult when he was a baby. Like he cried all the time. He wanted to be held all the time. He was a very needy child and it was extremely exhausting because I felt like 
like I could never get any free time. Like I felt like I could never get any separation from him because he always wanted to be held. Every single time I put him down, he would cry. And a lot of people told me that I should just let him cry. And I definitely agree with that sometimes, but it's like the way that they went about telling me to do it. They were like, well, let him cry. Don't come into the room. Just leave him in the room to cry because then eventually he'll comfort himself. Right. Then I heard people online. Now keep in mind that this is like around 2010. So things have changed, but people online were saying like a technique that you could use is like sitting in the room with your back turned to the baby or the, your, your back turned to the crib so that they know you're there, but that you're teaching them that they have to fend for themselves and take care of themselves. I know it might sound crazy, right? Whatever. You can judge me. You can do whatever you want. But I was trying to figure out a way to have peace because it's very difficult being a mother and having a newborn baby. And I tried all of those things. What I wish I would have done was just kind of make situations where he was more comfortable. Like, not that I didn't try to do these things, but I wish that I would have tried different techniques to like make him feel comforted in my space, but not make him feel ignored or not supported. What I want to express to you guys with this particular point is that it's okay to review what other people have done or what they've chosen to do when it comes to their parenting style. It's okay. Like you can take in information from all sources to see what may work for you. But that's why I feel like this is one of the biggest mistakes that new mothers make is the fact that they think that just because it worked for another mother, that is going to work for them. And that's not always the case. You have to choose to make decisions based on your intuition as a mother and what you feel like is going to be right for you and your child. No matter what people tell you that you should be doing, no matter what people have said have worked for them, you have to cater the situation and make it specific to the needs of you and your child, regardless of what other people say. People may not like the way that you choose to handle situations or the way that you choose to raise your children, but as long as you're not harming them and as long as you're making sure their well-being is taken care of, then it really doesn't matter what people think. The number one mistake that I feel like new mothers make when it comes to raising their children and just caring for their baby is never taking breaks. When you have a child, you're gonna be exhausted. You're going to be tired. You are gonna be tested to your limits. And there's gonna be really beautiful moments between you and your child. Or as a mother, you're going to feel very fulfilled. Most of the time, for most women who like wanna have a child, you're gonna feel those moments of love and fulfillment more likely than not, especially when you see your child at advancing, when you see them growing, when you see them rolling over for the first time, or you see them crawl or walk or whatever it is that they do that's considered to be a milestone in their lives. But you have to understand for yourself that if you are not full, if your cup is not full, if you are not fulfilled in some way, shape or form, when it comes to the things that you would like to do in your life, when it comes to what you want to have in your life, then you're not going to be able to fulfill anything for your baby or for your family. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I was a new mother, is burning the candle at both ends, trying to do every single thing, trying to cover everything, trying not to drop anything. I had to realize, which it's actually taken me quite a long time. Again, my oldest son is about to be 13. I have a son in the middle who's about to be 12 and my youngest is gonna be six this year. And I still sometimes find myself and have to catch myself overextending myself, doing too much, not replenishing my cup, not filling my cup because I realized that if I'm exhausted and I'm burnt out and I'm tired, there's nothing that I can do for my kids. And when you see people in society try to make you feel bad about doing things for yourself or being selfish, literally fuck them. They're crazy. They're trying to get you to fit into this stigmatized image that's unrealistic and it's not maintainable. You cannot maintain that type of lifestyle where you're constantly giving so much of yourself and you're never putting anything back in. So if you're a new mother or if you're a mother with older kids, I need you to understand that it's it's time for you to put aside time for yourself. It's time for you to do for yourself. It's time for you to look in the mirror and say, am I happy? And if you look back at yourself and you see the person in the mirror looking back at you and you cannot say that you're happy and you cannot say that you're fulfilled, then there needs to be a step back that you take when it comes to how much energy you're investing in your children and your family. And that may be something that's an unpopular opinion that people don't want you to like realize or admit to, but you have to.
Because if not, you're literally going to run yourself into an early grave. No one can do everything and be everywhere at all times. It's impossible. So for you to feel the pressure of being a mother and being the best mother that you can be and feel like you can never drop the ball, that's unrealistic. That's something that's really gonna take you down a really rough path. And I know from experience because I'm at a point now where my kids are older and I'm realizing that there's not a lot of things in my life that make me happy. There's definitely hobbies that I have. Like I'm not sitting here saying I'm a depressed person just because I had kids or that I have some type of gripe about the life path that I've chosen. I do regret sometimes having the amount of kids that I had when I had them. And there are regrets that I have about having children, but that wouldn't change the love that I have for my children. It just means that now I'm reflecting on my life and realizing that there's situations that I probably didn't handle properly. And that goes back to our first topic, which was about making mistakes. I'm acknowledging that and I'm okay with it because now I can readjust. Now I can pivot and move towards the things that I feel like I need to be doing in my life. One of which is telling you guys about my experiences because I refuse to leave this earth without letting the truth be known about certain situations. And this is one of them. So when it comes down to you raising your kids and you feeling as if you have no time for yourself, you can never take a break. Your husband is not helping you. Your baby daddy is not helping you, your boyfriend or whoever. You have no family members to help you. You need to find a way where you can take time for yourself. Whether that be letting your kid go to daycare or whether that be letting someone watch your child, babysit your child, whether that be giving custody to the other parent, whether it be maybe taking some days off work and going on a vacation or a staycation, whatever you have to do, you have to take time out to fill your own cup. You might have to tell your husband, look, I need some time off. I need a night off. I need a break. I need to go to the movies by myself or I need to go to a paint and sip or I need to go walk on the beach or whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself back sane. But you cannot feel bad about doing that because there's nothing for you to feel bad about. It's the truth. If you collapse, who will be there for your baby? If you collapse, who will be there for your child? You won't be. And that's that. It's a sobering thought, but like it's the truth. And it's something that so many women have trouble coming to terms with because we're expected to be this angelic, perfect individual who has it all figured out and who has it all taken care of and we don't need any help. That's unrealistic. So I don't want you to be put in that situation and I don't want you to feel like you have to be in that situation. We're coming into times that are more expansive when it comes to how we see situations and different perspectives that we have as a society. And I really believe that it's way past time to change this perspective where women and mothers are supposed to be these superheroes that never sit down and never take a break. We need to change that. So share this video with someone you know who you think may need to hear it. Y'all be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave me comments below and let me know your thoughts on this. How do you feel? What are some things that you wish that you would have known before having your kids or after you had your kids, what you wish you would have done differently so that you can be a voice for those who may be reading those comments. Now, I do have a bonus for you guys. Before we go, I just want you guys to know because of the mistakes that I feel like a lot of mothers make, one thing that I feel like you should know when it comes to being a mother, period, regardless of whatever situation that you're in or whatever particular topic that you apply it to, this is the most important thing that I feel like you guys need to know. Always be prepared. Be prepared for anything. Physically be prepared for anything when it comes to going out with your children, when it comes to what you're going to be experiencing. Emotionally be prepared for anything. Mentally be prepared for anything. And spiritually be prepared for anything and know that they're going to constantly be things coming at you if you choose to have a child. You are never going to be without conflict in your life. And it's not necessarily like it's always going to be tumultuous, but it's like there's always going to be decisions that you have to make. So I feel like a lot of you guys need to know to be prepared. And you have to understand that preparedness is not always physical preparedness. Like it's not always having pampers and wipes that you can use to change your kid. It's not always about having a band-aid in your purse or a cough drop. Sometimes it's about being prepared mentally and emotionally for the types of things that you're going to encounter when you have children. So always be prepared, you guys. I really appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to leave me your comments below and let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe. And you guys just stay positive. That's all I can say. Like if you're a mom and you're out here at your wit's end, that's probably why you found this video. That's probably why you were called here. That's probably why you're seeing my face and hearing my voice right now. And I want you to know to stay encouraged. You can get 
out of any situation that you are in. You can overcome any situation that you've been placed in or that you've chosen for yourself. And you can do it with strength, courage, grace, and wisdom. It's just about the matter of your choice. What do you want to do in your life moving forward? So you guys be sure to subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. And remember, that's why they call them mom jeans. Because everybody can't fit in them. <laughs> Bye.